Okay, it's Sarah Jane from Access Your True Nature. And I want to speak about adjustment. This is what September is really all about and how you can create more calm in a time where there is a lot of breakdown going on and old structures crumbling. And this moon is in Pisces. It's a full moon in Pisces. And this really is bringing, again, moons are always watery. So it's the watery emotions of the kidney, the existential fear of survival, the bladder issues that we have around control, what we have control of and what we don't have control of. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Colleen. And it really is just an invitation, again, to feel everything because Pisces is bringing up this very high sensitivity. And if you're feeling a little bit off, my invitation to you today is really just to go into a place of recognizing and feeling everything in your body. I know I speak about this all the time. Ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> my hair is all, all a little messy. I was out, out in the horses and they were eating my hair. Looks like hay, but they soon found out that it wasn't. But thank you, Colleen. So how can we create more alignment in, in our environment? I think what I want to speak to is really that instead of, you know, when I talk about adjustment, I'm really talking about, hi Paul, um, really talking about how can you let, get your environment to adjust to you, not the other way around. And, and seeing where you can really renew your commitment because Pisces is really the keeper of the spiritual journey. So again, this full moon offers us up this invitation to really get in touch with our feelings. Hi, Roxanne. And, and to come from a place of non-attachment. You know, a lot of people think that means stopping uh, instead of listening to your body and really just tuning in and getting very, very still. That's the place of undoing. It's, it's still movement, it's still about moving, but it's really a deep place of stillness that you can't know unless you know the opposite of that. And I think this is really what yin and yang's, yang is all about. We, we come installed knowing that we're this whole integrated part and there's no program. It's just a perspective that includes your physicality. It includes your body catching up to the spiritual or the mental or the emotional journey that you've already you you already know as an infinite being you already know what you know so how can you you know what would kindness say this is this is a beautiful place what would trust say to you in this moment hello jennifer and where can you sort of if you have been feeling like you're out of sorts or that th th there's a lot of change happening and some of, you, some of it's integrating and, and there are other parts where you're still in resistance, the still point is very different to being the space of a different possibility. So this really is about feeling everything, attuning into your frequency, rising up against this, the unside, right? The undoing of what you see. Hi, Kelly. And this is, the, this is where the light comes into the dark. This is where the moon, the full moon, it really illuminates to us all this existential fear, the what ifs, the, the, the dread, the resistance, the parts that are afraid and allowing your, your body to actually catch up. So going at your body's pace, I know I repeat myself a lot because I really want you to get this, that we have to have more compassion to ourselves. We have to help ourselves before we can help others. We have to help um, ourselves before we can help animals. And this is, this is the place where our body has to play catch up and you have to go at your body's pace and trust, you know, trust is the big part. I hear so many people, there's everyone's launching, it's summer in, in America right now and everybody's doing their big launches and, and you know, it's like this, you know, take this money magic program, put on your fairy godmother wings. Um, you know, it's, it's very, it's very mind from the egoic mind that, that you need to take anything other than your own dose of medicine and really guard, have strong boundaries. You can't have strong boundaries if you don't trust yourself. So all this thing about, you know, um, strengthening your boundaries or uh, doing s something, no program, no three, three day uh, life transformational event is going to change anything unless you return to trust. And to do that, you have to look at undoing the parts of you that are, that are making the, the dark 
wrong or the suffering wrong or the pain wrong that you're feeling right now as sensitives, which so many of you are. So go in and take a listen to, you know, what is your unique heart, heartbeat right now? What is, your, what is your intuitive, wise woman asking you to move into and adjust into? This is where we need flexibility in the wood in Chinese medicine. If you're not watering your wood, right, all this watery emotion of the, of the full moon, if we're not letting these emotions come to the surface and really feeling it and, and having the thought and honoring the thought, you've got to respect your thoughts. You can't just negate the thoughts or, or, or say, okay, I'm not going to think. The trust process is very much based in allowing the thoughts to come up and honoring and respecting that you have the thought and that you're the one that is thinking the thoughts. Hello, Judy Anderson. I know we need to, we need to jump on Skype. Maybe we can do that when we're done. Um, but really honoring that you are the thinker, that you are the gatekeeper. And look at where are you not tending to your internal garden? Where are you not watering your wood? Uh, I planted some beautiful seedlings. I've got pansies and I can't, don't know if I can show you, but I, I, I did some planting on the weekend um, and, and put new, new growth, uh, spring growth into, into my baskets and into, into the garden because this is the time for planting and it's time to water the garden. So the heat is here in South Africa and, and for me, metaphorically, the, tending your garden, doing the internal landscaping is really what this, this work is all about that you have to undo the parts of you that you are resisting or neglecting or not watering and allow the watery emotional part of you that the moon offers, it's, it's all water. We're 70% water and 90% space. So we have to let the waters flow again and we have to do it at our body's pace because you know, your wise woman knows, she's always known. Are you still in bed? That's funny. Um, Go back to sleep. So use the full moon in Pisces. It's that real Neptunian energy that's saying, do some spiritual hygiene. You know, look at where you've fallen out of rituality. It's fallen Europe. Beautiful. And I love the change of seasons because it really is such a, such a physical marker, isn't it, for us to, to get back in touch with our natural rhythms and our natural cycle with nature. You know, all this suffering is, is, is because we've separated from nature. We, we're not trusting our own true nature and we're, we're not trusting that we, we are one with nature. And I know that's pretty, pretty one of those crazy things. It's just like you are one, one in the identity of who you are. This is not about the stories. And we have to empty, empty our minds. We have to, we have to get, get our minds empty again from this place of making more space, really, really making more space or lengthening the space between the thoughts that you can have those still moments of absolute clarity. You can't have it when you're so busy and our minds are full. Empty your minds. This is a great time to empty your minds. Um, Access, access that new Neptunian energy that's, that's very creative, that, that creative aspect that makes you up through the active and passive reproductive system, the urinary system in Chinese medicine. This is where we, we are born as creative spirit in a body. So m where can you? Where can you? That's my question today. Love yourself kindly and compassionately and go at your own pace. Exactly, Joanne. We are the keepers of ourselves and we are the gatekeepers of our gardens. So again, when you trust that you are totally responsible for, for tending to your garden and creating your own safety, whether that's financial or emotional or mental or physical, then you can fiercely guard your your garden gate and decide who you let in and who you don't let in and if it's not a kindness why would you choose it you know this is where we go into obligation hi butch so go in and listen go and listen to your heartbeat uh use this beautiful full moon to really access that 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 you are the bridge you can create heaven on earth and hi hi Anne. um 
you're not flawed, okay? You are an infinite being in a body with, with many, many opportunities and possibilities available to you, and you can't access that if you don't allow your emo emotional bodies to, to, to hold space for your physical body to catch up. I hope that makes sense. So keep moving. I'm gonna make these, these Facebook Lives a lot shorter. Miracles do happen. Hello, Candice. Nice to see you here. Hi, Rashad. So yeah, you know, this, this really just requires the practice of undoing, unhooking from technology, being really, really still. It's the hardest thing to do. If any of you have ever taken that time in your rituality to just be still, uh, it requires stopping the thoughts, right? Not by stopping or resisting, but allowing the thoughts to come up and respecting them and observing them and letting them go away. So tune in, tune in right now and, and look at uh, what would kindness do? What would trust do? What would love do if you find yourself beating yourself up right now? Hello, Lara. Hello, Erin. Nice to see you all joining me on this beautiful sunny afternoon. So that's, that's it today. Um, happy full moon ceremonies to you uh, take some time to to really have some reverence with yourself and 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 just get curious about where you can really deepen into trusting that that spiritual aspect of you to to come home to your physical body to your heart and really return to trust in your body in your life in God in other people um, because I think undoing undoing all the old programming, all those sort of false falsities and just the crap that's going on where everyone's saying, push, 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 you need this, you need to do this, you need to do that. You have the power of the choice. The power of choice is yours and yours alone. And you can't, you're not going to trust yourself to choose if you're, if you're getting so busy in all the, in all the outside noise. So, you know, undoing is much more important than doing, but just like the yin and the yang, we have to know what the doing looks like. We have to know what the pain feels like in order to choose unlove. No, I didn't cut my hair. Uh, thank you, Anjana. I think it just looks, I don't know, it looks a bit messy. Um, I was saying earlier, I was with the horses earlier and they love to eat my hair, so it, it looks a little crazy. Probably got a bit of grass stuck in there. Um, but this is really about adjustment. So, how can you invite in a great spirit, uh, physical support to, to assist you in this time where you might be feeling a little bit stuck or a little bit off between um, external noise and external con constructs that are all sort of breaking down right now? And how can you return to really dreaming the dream? Dreaming the dream may seem beautiful. Thank you, Judy. Dreaming the dream and really envisioning what it is that you want to create as your future. And use the serego, that, that exercise that I, that I play with that I shared the other day, of really talking about your life as if it has already happened. Because when you do that long enough, it's kind of like um, what I was doing with, with addictions, many of them. But... Uh, with the smoking is just to say every time I light a cigarette to say this is the most loving thing that I can give my body right now and as crazy as it sounds this is the counterintuitive stuff of, of energy medicine and and the work that I do with the trust process with animals and people is that it, it's so out of congruence that that you stop being addicted to the thing that you need from a place of lack and scarcity rather than a place of desire and that homecoming, that, that place where you sort of come, come home to your heart. So I hope uh, it is powerful. It's very powerful in Jonah. And it's, again, it's just really about looking at that you are omnipresent and omnisensory and you can't, I say this all the time, you can't you can't cap your happiness because you're afraid that you're going to be unhappy or that it can't last. So all these these old patterns and beliefs that we've bought into that that we can't be ourselves, that we can't speak our truth for fear of or what if, you know, what if this happens or you're waiting for the other shoe to drop, which so many people 
that I've been speaking to, the, my clients at the moment, they're really feeling like they're being shook up again. So, you know, reminder, it's 2017. It's the year of the cockerel. It's saying cockle doodle do, wake up. Um, there, is no, there is no time to waste, okay? There's only the space to lean into envisioning and futuring a world that is sustainable, a world that, that we actually, are, we are uh, the ancestors of the future generations that haven't been born yet. So what is your living legacy going to be? And how can you undo all the old programming, all the old systems, all the old attitudes and, and limiting points of, of view and come from a place of non-attachment and just keep moving toward it? Inch by inch is a cinch, yard by yard is hard. So celebrate the small wins. Uh, have gratitude. I've been doing uh, Pedram Shagai's uh, 50 gongs for the last 50 days. And it's just been, again, a wonderful, a wonderful anchor for me to just remember to take the time uh, to move, take the time to squat if you're sitting at a desk. It's, pre it's pretty interesting. Um, I've been hanging, you know, literally just hanging because I, I, I tend to have a very locked up shoulder. Uh, from time to time, that's one of my points that my body says, hey, where are you locking up your life? Where are you put t shouldering too much? So I've just been adding and, and, and increasing incrementally, little by little every day, the amount of time that I'm just hanging, hanging from my gum pole at the front of my house and seeing the thoughts come up that, that say, oh boy, this, this gum tree, and I can see my name, oh, it's going to snap and you, you need to replace it. And, and just letting my, the thoughts come up and then just go back to just feeling my body hanging and feeling how the fascia starts to, to realign and feel how my back is getting a lot more, more flexible. We're, we're designed to squat. You know, we're not supposed to sit on chairs. So little, little things like that. Uh, play with me. If you did the seven-day challenge, and John, I know you were on it. Um, some of, a lot of you were on the last seven-day challenge, the Believe Challenge. Go back to not looking at it that you're going to train or you're going to work out, but that your life is a workout. You know, I always say to people, I am a practitioner. I'm a practitioner. I am practicing being me while I'm trying to figure out what that is and, and explore who that is and how, how far I can, can push my body into a different place, adjusting my body. Uh, horses are not clumsy. Animals don't fall down. They don't roll just for the joy of it. Well, a lot of them do, but a lot of time, they know how to adjust their bodies. And sometimes it looks a little extreme, like hanging from a pole or doing a handstand. And like two o'clock last night, I got out of bed and went to the toilet and on the way back I was like there's a beautiful wall that, that, that I'm going to just do a handstand against and I was huffing and puffing but I felt really good to have that little head rush and then go back to bed because sometimes we need an, our body knows that it needs an adjustment so you don't need a chiropractor to that to do that uh, just go and hang for a bit or squat for a bit and kudos to um, I do um, he's one of my absolute heroes in 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 the culture of movement that it's that our bodies are designed to move so if you're feeling stuck if you're feeling like uh, agitated or you're just feeling a little stagnate stagnated stagnationed I don't know if that's a word go go hang go hang and swing and play and do a cartwheel when was the last time you did a cartwheel and and build yourself up every day to just do a little bit more every 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 day and dream into how do you want your life to feel and then listen to your heart and then go do it okay so keep moving attune to the new vibrational frequencies of of this place you know the eclipse the eclipse really shook things up it was even more coming out of the shadows of break breaking down the old structures hi Carl um, so, so be compassionate to yourself so that you can be compassionate to other human beings and everything else that's arising for you and just love that. All right, I said I was gonna make this short and I don't think it's short anymore. So mwah, much love, going to our natural self, what we are meant to be, says Anjana. This is medicine to heal. Yeah, absolutely, go back to nature. Access your true nature. You can't access your true nature if you are not deeply in trust, trusting yourself, trusting your body, trusting others, which is a tough one, 
because we are so attached to our old stories. I know trust is one of my, my core wounds that I came here to heal in this lifetime. Hi, Joanne. Um, and trust, trusting in God or universe or divine, you know, this is bigger than all of us and it's bigger than our, than, than our old stories. So find that sacredness in your life again. This is really what Neptune's asking us to do in, in this big Pisces moon is tap into what do I want my life to look like for the highest, greatest good of myself and the impact and the gifts and the capacities that I've come to share with the world and then adjust your environment to set you up, right? Not get upset, but that the universe can meet you there. Have the faith and the ease is there if you access trust. Yeah, I think it's a big one for, mo for most people in Jhana. Uh, and that's why my work is so deeply rooted in the trust process. And I'm looking forward to sharing that. I hope you come uh, to be with the horses. We're doing Being Heard on the 23rd of August. So if you're in, in the Gauteng area and you've always wanted to connect to the heart, the horses' hearts are 600 times bigger than ours. And just being in that field allows you that space of undoing all the thinking. Because if you're not present, you're not going to listen to, you're not going to hear your, the whisper touch, the God wings that come through to you. So take that as a sign if you're listening to this and you've been kind of sitting on the fence, haha, -ha, um, about being heard. And I'm going to be teaching the trust process because without that, without that ability to trust yourself and trust in life, doesn't matter what you throw at yourself it's kind of you know it's a band-aid it'll work for a while and then you'll go back to you see I can't trust myself or you see I can't trust this thing and I remember I remember holding on to that story myself for a long time when we had the armed robbery and my husband had said that our dog mysteriously no thing you know was very all very odd um but my 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 big boy husky sky had disappeared out the gate which is insane uh the night before and and i know that the indigenous people around here are very scared of him because he had he looked like a ghost dog he had these piercing blue blue eyes and he looked like a wolf and um he disappeared and the vet had called us in the morning and said they'd found the dog and my husband had said to me I found that I found Sky. I'll be home in 10 minutes. And literally, in that 10 minutes, four armed robbers with guns to my head forced the gate open and, and, and terrorized us for over two hours. And I was so angry and I was so pissed off because I couldn't trust my husband from that day on because he didn't do what he said he was going to do. So again, looking into the, the spiritual aspect of, of where are you out of trust, trusting yourself that you, you create your own safety and not relying on somebody else to, to create safety for you that they cannot possibly give you. you have to, you're the only one that can create that for yourself and you're the only one that can trust, trust yourself. Okay. Um, and a lot of time this goes back to adverse childhood experiences. So, so look at where you're separating out. Look at where you are, are ready to return to trust and really tap into your heart and um, access that part of you that knows it's time. It's time to come home. It's time to find the sacredness in your life. Uh, we are so blessed to be alive at this time. And we're, I know sometimes it can feel like a curse because we have, we have work to do as light workers, we have work to do. And we're not here to be tugboats and push and effort. We're here to be the light. And the light needs, needs adjustment right now. We need to adjust to our bodies, light, literally lightening up. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm going on and on again, but thank you, Anjana, for that. I appreciate it. Hello, Ashley, and goodbye, Alexandra, Ashley. Thank you for joining this conversation and uh, happy full moon. Mwah.